Still in South Africa, over 700 Wildcat strikers have rejected a pay offer from the management of the Lanxus Chemicals Chrome Mine. Now, the workers are in their sixth day of illegal industrial action, and today's events have sparked quite a bit of concern about the potential spread of the country's labor woes. CCTV's Guy Henderson has been on that story. He has the details. Another Wildcat wage demand that management aren't willing to give. And this is the result. 743 staff are employed at this mine. Production is at a standstill. Protesters peaceful but stubborn. Uh, here we have got a problem for the bonuses. As from 2011, 2012, 2013, then we get a bonus on our mind, but we as employer, we didn't get it. When people want things, they tend to fight. It's a fighting country. Not fighting for things that you don't believe in. People, they fight for things that they believe in. So if you want to, nego uh, to engage maybe management and you feel that the management is not taking you seriously, the belief is if you act, there will be a response. Ten strikers were injured here on Tuesday by the rubber bullets of mine security. The embers of that confrontation have now mostly been put out. We are at the moment right in the middle of the platinum belt, but dotted in between the Lon Mins and the Anglo-American Platinums are chrome mines that have so far remained pretty much unaffected by the labour strife in this region. That is, until now. That could have economic implications if it spreads. As well as having the world's largest platinum reserve, South Africa's chrome quantities are also unrivalled. But while disruption at the platinum mines may have been underpinned by union rivalry, the crowds here remain firmly in the NUM camp for now. There are elements of AMCO. Uh, however, here in this mine, workers are united and uh, workers uh, have given their full support to NUM. In the past, police may have stepped in. These are, after all, illegal gatherings. But officials now walk a careful line. You also then have to use what we call situation appropriateness and using that as a person on the ground you then decide if I use this tactic what is going to be the implication so as police officers in terms of our training we are then able to apply our mind based on the situation that is on the ground. <laughs> The mood here remains light-hearted, a haven still mostly hidden from the conflict on its doorstep. If this drags on, though, tempers may fray, allegiances may be tested. Guy Henderson, CCTV, Rustenburg. Let's examine the jitters down south in South Africa as the labour turmoil does continue. CCTV's Guy Henderson is live in Johannesburg tonight. Guy, what exactly is going on at that mine? Are these workers due a bonus from the company or not? Well, uh, the company, uh, Lengsas Chemicals, say that um, this was never part of the deal, that these workers were never meant to be included in, the, in this particular bonus scheme. They say that a letter was written by the CEO uh, to uh, inform staff at 50 of this company's global sites that they would be uh, able to benefit from uh, a bonus payment scheme, but that this particular mine was not included in that. Um, they say that there is an ongoing bonus payment scheme at the mine, but, but that it's performance related. As part of that deal, they did approach these striking workers on Wednesday to uh, offer them a, a deal whereby if they were able to produce 8,000 or so tonnes of chrome over a certain period, they would then allow them a one-off payment of 5,000 rand. Now, the workers were very quick to reject that. They said it was an insult. Um, they even accused the mine of um, intentionally setting a quota that was unachievable. Now, I haven't been able to get hold of uh, the original letter written by the company, which may, um, may have in it, I, I suppose, some sort of ambiguity uh, in the language, which may have led these workers to assume or uh, somehow believe that they were entitled to this particular bonus payment scheme. I think at this point uh, it could be slightly irrelevant. The fact is these strikers um, want more money and um, they have behind them a union that despite the fact that these strikes are illegal are slow um, I think to take firm action or condemn their action perhaps because they fear that they may begin to lose support in a sector that they do still enjoy some support in. So I think given the very tough labour climate in South Africa 
it's going to be very difficult to get these workers to go back to work unless they get something in return from the company. Speaking of getting something in return, we understand that Amplatz has reached some sort of deal with the unions in order to, and I'm quoting here from some of the reports, preserve jobs. What exactly does this deal entail? Uh, well, I haven't actually been informed about that deal. Um, what I do know is that talks have been ongoing since Amplatz um, last week, I think, had announced these, this revised plan of 6,000 job cuts. In January, they'd said that it was to be 14,000. That was met with absolute fury from, uh, from the South African government and the unions. They then had to go back to the negotiating table with the Department of Mineral Resources and the Department of Labor. And then uh, the, the result was this revised plan for 6,000 jobs to be cut. Um, it was today announced on Wednesday that those job cuts would begin to take place on Friday. So um, that could then begin to lead to more unrest uh, in the platinum belt around these Amplatz mines where we have uh, since last year seen uh, a lot of mining unrest, violent mining unrest um, across that region. Indeed. We'll have to leave you there for the time being. Thank you very much for your time. That's CCTV's Guy Henderson live in Johannesburg at a time where the South African rand has lost roughly 12, 12 and a half percent against the US dollar so far, mainly due to the labor unrest that you've just seen.